In this video, I'm going to talk about how to measure a company's post-retirement health care benefit obligation. So you might be aware that some companies offer pensions to employees when they retire. But you might not be aware that some companies also offer other post-retirement benefits, such as health care. So let's jump right into an example. Let's say the company Bicycle Seatbelts has an unfunded retiree health care plan. So here's how this works. If employees at the company work a total of at least 10 years, then when they retire, they will get health care benefits from the company. Okay, so if they don't make it to 10 years, they get no health care benefits. If they work 10 years or longer, they're going to get health care benefits. Now, if they end up working 20, 25, 30 years, it doesn't matter. They just need to work 10 years to qualify for these post-retirement health care benefits. Now, at the end of 2024, the company hires an actuary. The actuary determines that the net cost of providing the health care benefits to the retirees when they retire uh, is going to have a present value of $800,000. Now, we had said that the employees need to work 10 years to qualify for the benefits. This is called the attribution period. We'll come back to that in a moment. Now, also at the end of 2024, the employees have already worked two years. So they of the 10 that they need to work in total to qualify for the post-retirement health care, they've already done two at the end of 2024. Now, uh, the information also tells us here the employees are expected to work for the company a total of 25 years. We're going to disregard that. Does, that doesn't matter. That's just a distraction. Uh, that might be relevant for other purposes. But here, when we're measuring the obligation, we only care about the attribution period, the amount of time they need to work uh, to be able to qualify uh, for the health care benefits. Okay, So it doesn't matter how long they're going to end up working for the company beyond once they've qualified. Now, uh, we also got the interest rate. Uh, of 5%, which will be relevant as well, you'll see momentarily. Now, questions are, what is the employer's obligation as of December 31st, 2024? And then what is the obligation as of December 31st, 2025? We're going to answer both of those. Now, it's a little bit complicated when we talk about pension uh, or uh, other post-retirement benefits other than pensions. With the pensions, we're largely dealing with the thing called the PBO, if you remember the projected benefit obligation. But when we're talking about other post-retirement benefits, like health care provided to employees in retirement, we actually got a couple different obligations that we're going to be doing calculations with. So first up, we've got the EPBO, so the Expected Post-Retirement Benefit Obligation. This number is going to be estimated by an actuary. So actually in our problem up here, uh, it is given to us as 800,000 as of December 31st, 2024. So we'll come back to that in a second. So that's just the present value of the benefits that are expected to be earned by these employees. And again, an actuary would make those estimates and then share that with company management. Now, what do we do with this EPBO? Well, it's going to be used to calculate the APBO and then also service cost. Service cost is going to be relevant when we go to calculate the post-retirement benefit expense, which I will do in another video. Uh, but right now, we're talking about calculating the obligation. Okay, We just said the EPBO is given by the actuary, but the APBO, the accumulated post-retirement benefit obligation, that is calculated from the EPBO. So we get the EPBO from the actuary, then we use the EPBO to calculate the APBO. Okay, so the APBO, if you think about, well, what is this conceptually? The fraction of the EPBO that is attributable to years worked up until that date and time. So if we're talking about as of December 31st, 2024, the APBO, what is it? That is the fraction of the EPBO that is attributable to years that have been worked up until December 31st, 2024. Now, we're going to use it to calculate interest cost. Okay, so uh, let me get a little typo there. Use to, or use to calculate interest cost. I don't need the D there. Uh, and that will be relevant when we go to calculate post-retirement benefit expense. But again, this video is just talking about calculating the obligation. So I wanted to show you, again, calculating EPBO, APBO for 2024, 2025, the end of each year. Now, the APBO, another thing I should mention that it's used for, it's the amount that's going to be netted with any plan assets, which in this example, it said the plan was unfunded, so plan assets are zero, but netted with any plan assets and reported on the balance sheet as a single line item. Okay, so APBO gets netted with plan assets and reported on the balance sheet. Now, let's go and let's do these calculations. Now, for the EPBO as of December 31st, 2024, we don't need to do any calculations because it was given to us. We said that the actuary said that the present value of the benefits as of that date were 800,000. So that was just given in the problem. The actuary just told us that's what it was. Now, 
if we said, well, one year forward, okay, December 31st, 2025, what has happened to the EPBO? Okay, it's actually going to grow, right? It's going to grow. We're going to multiply it. We're going to take the 800,000 times one plus the discount rate, our interest rate. And the interest rate was given in the problem as 5%. So we take the beginning EPBO, multiply it by one plus that interest rate, and that gives us 840,000. Now, there are other things that could change the EPBO uh, as of December 31st, 2025. It could be that when that time comes, the actuary says, you know what? Actually, some of my estimates were way off. And so it ends up not being 840,000. If the problem were to tell you, oh, the actuary made some revisions to, to what their estimates were and stuff like that. But we didn't have that in, that pro in this problem. We just said, okay, as of December 31st, 2024, it was given by the actuary to be 800,000. Assuming there are no changes in the estimate going forward beyond that by what the actuary had said uh, the next uh, at the end of the next year it would just be uh, 800,000 times one plus our interest rate or aka discount rate so that's the EPBO hey remember I said the EPBO is used to calculate the APBO so here we've got our APBO if we just look at December 31st 2024 we take the 800,000, which is the EPBO of that date, the 800,000, and we multiply that by the years of service to date. That means that people have worked two years as of December 31st, 2024, but they need to work 10 years in total, our attribution period, to be fully eligible for these healthcare benefits in retirement. So they've worked two of the 10 years or 20% of the, the attribution period they've worked. Okay, to qualify for these benefits. So 20% times 800,000 is 160,000. So that's our APBO, December 31st, 2024. It's just the EPBO times the years worked until that point divided by the total number of years they need to work in order to qualify for the benefits, okay? So they've worked two of the 10 years that they need to, uh, to work to, to get those healthcare benefits. Now, December 31st, 2025, so one year forward, now we again take the EPBO, which again, now that's 840,000 as of December 31st, 2025. So it's not 800 again, now it's 840. But now instead of multiplying by two over 10, we don't multiply by two over 10, we multiply by three over 10 because it's one year later. So now the employees would have worked three years of the 10 that they need to be able to qualify for those healthcare benefits. So we've got the EPBO as of December 31st, 2025, times the years worked until uh, up until December 31st, 2025, the employees have worked three years at that point in time. And still they need to work 10 years in, uh, in total uh, to get the healthcare benefits. So 30% of 840,000 is 252,000. Now in terms of the balance sheet, so we said that there are no plan assets here. Okay. So plan assets are zero. This is an unfunded plan. So there's no plan assets set aside to later pay these benefits. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a liability on the balance sheet each date. So if we look at December 31st, 2024 balance sheet, we're going to have a liability post-retirement health care obligation. And it's going to be the net amount of plan assets in the APBO. Now, the APBO as of that date, 160000 Plan assets, we said, are zero because we're assuming the plan is unfunded. So we net the plan assets in the APBO of December 31st, 2024, and we get 160,000. If the APBO is higher than plan assets, which it is because plan assets are zero, we have a liability. Hypothetically, if there were plan assets and the plan assets exceeded the APBO, we'd actually have an asset recorded here, okay? But typically these plans are unfunded. Uh, so we're gonna have the APBO uh, exceed the plan assets. And in this case, again, a, a liability. Now. Uh, just, oh, I got a little typo here. So this is December 31st, 2025, right here, the balance sheet, December 31st, 2025. If we would have a balance sheet then, we would again have a liability, but the APBO as of that date is 252,000. We're still assuming plan assets are zero. So if we net the plan assets as zero with the APBO of 252,000, we would have a liability again, but this time it would be $252,000 liability post-retirement uh, post healthcare obligation on the company's balance sheet as of December 31st, 2025.